Hello, it's a very, very warm welcome to my YouTube this evening. It's a very brief look at the uh, what the UK government preparations they've made uh, during the 60s and 1970s, just in, uh, in the event of a nuclear outbreak. So um, pin your ears back and enjoy the film. The idea was, had the bomb gone off, they would all congregate here. Uh, they would shut down inside here. They had enough oil in the tanks to run the generators for 35 days. A warning may come quite unexpectedly. We will now tell you what to do if a warning sounds when you are at home. And then we will explain what to do if you are out of doors. First, if you are at home. If attack is imminent, you will hear the attack sound like this. So take cover at once. Send your young children to the fallout room, then go quickly and turn off the gas and the electricity at the mains. Close down stoves. Shut windows. And draw curtains. Then go to your fallout room and stay there. If the fallout warning sounds are heard, they will be like these. Here is an emergency announcement. An air attack is approaching this country now. Go to shelter or take cover at once. decided that in the present state of international tension you should be told how best to protect yourselves from the dangerous effects of nuclear attack. Using sacks or sandbags which should be about two-thirds filled you can block the windows from the outside. Alternatively you can fill boxes or other containers with tightly packed earth. 20 miles into the Essex countryside beneath an ordinary looking bungalow near Calverton Hatch a massive underground bunker was secretly equipped to govern whatever remained of London. Maintained for possible use until the early 1990s, the bunker has since been sold back to the landowners and is now a museum. If you are caught in the open by the attack, fling yourself on the ground instantly, wherever you are. You would first of all get the uh the flash of light which would blind you, uh, followed by the heat that would evaporate you or burn you very severely and that would be followed by winds of up to 700 miles an hour which would obviously do quite a lot of damage. If you are at home or visiting, move instantly away from open windows or doors and take cover behind the nearest solid protection. You would then be faced with five days of lethal radiation that would kill you almost immediately. After that, though, it does begin to get a little bit better. You still die, of course, it just takes you a little bit longer. 
There are several simple kinds of shelter core you could make. Here, two doors are leaned against the wall, leaving a space in which the householder and his family can sit. You are meant to take your uh, pass. The government approached my grandfather and under the threat of compulsory purchase they took from us the 25 acre field in the middle of our farm. They bulldozed the top of the hill that was there all around the outside edge of the field. They put armed RAF guards on top of that to stop anybody looking over and uh, they proceeded to build the bunker. The bunker is equipped to hold people down here for about three months. We've got enough water supply for that, we've had enough food in here for that, and the generator fuel uh, is enough to run for that. The air conditioning would obviously keep the air churned round, the filters, we've got enough of those to uh, be able to filter the dust, the radiative dust out. It was originally built for about 600 people. Not many people to uh, govern quite a large area, but I suppose there wouldn't have been many people to govern, so it wouldn't have mattered too much. Once the first bomb had gone off, the regional commissioner here would have been the man who would have been in charge of this area. The commissioner's powers would have been absolutely total. He would have the power of life and death. Uh, he would be able to sort any marauding gang out uh, by sending off the police or the army to uh, ultimately kill them. Uh, his whole duty down here was to the greater population, not just to any individual or group of individuals who were trying to break in here or take over the power of government. BBC engineers would have been in here and then we'll go next door and we can see there where the broadcaster would have been sitting. We interrupt regular programming to bring you a message from Her Majesty's Government. Please stand by and await further information. Information of a possible nuclear strike against this country has been received. The current threat level is critical. We are just, sitting, in it. just standing here in the broadcast room and you will notice all the acoustic panels and the purpose of these was to provide a suitable sound arena for them to be able to broadcast on radio and the engineers I've spoken to in the past have said that one of the difficulties in these bunkers was getting the studio quiet enough with this air conditioning rumbling away to be able to broadcast reasonably effectively. The BBC radio studio uh, was down here so that the Commissioner or indeed the Prime Minister or somebody important if they'd come down here could have broadcast to the nation to tell us what was happening. And here walking into the first of the two studio rooms was where the engineer would have been with the equipment ready to broadcast and the purpose of all that was really everybody was told that's all the general public public were told listen on your local radio for information and instructions on what to do the United Kingdom Warning and Monitoring Organization, with all its highly trained resources, is spread like chain mail over the entire country. Break one link, break many links. The overall organization can still be kept operative. Built on high ground so as to overlook London and other potential targets, the government's UK Warning and Monitoring Organization maintained a network of over 1,500 observation posts throughout the country from the late 1950s onwards. Lots of old RAF people have come back to have a, have a visit, um, and one of them, a couple of them actually, told me about the wartime pilot that used to come up the steps here. There were people here 24 hours a day, and it was kept fully operational in as much that all the systems were kept so that they could be brought into use should the bomb have something have gone off. You were meant to take your uh, passport and your bank books with you. Not because when you came up there would be any banks, but of course it was a way of uh, identifying you if they needed to identify you later on. Cynics would say that all the stuff you put on top of you was designed to cremate you, so they didn't actually have to worry about uh, clearing you up afterwards.
the country was split up into a number of regions and there were regional war rooms. The idea being that some at least would survive. The uh, rotundas are the central collecting point for all the communications for the whole regional war rooms uh, network. So there would have been a large staff of civil defence personnel maintaining contact between all the various war rooms and relaying orders to the regional commissioners. Scramble, scramble. Although every effort has been made to destroy the enemy attack, inevitably some sections of it will get through to unleash their deadly weapons. The GLC in the early 80s did a um, a study and they reckoned that it was going to be 85% casualties, about 5.5 million people would have been killed in the first two days of a nuclear war if London had been the target. It was a strange situation to be in, knowing that we possibly would be well protected here and our families uh, would be outside if a bomb went off and probably killed. Um, we did have plans to try and look after our families and um, hopefully these would have come into effect. But um, it was a strange situation to be in really and people often wondered how many people would actually turn up on the day if something actually happened. Pressure 2.5. Indicator downstairs, downstairs okay. and that would register a reading. How big the bomb was. Yes. 60 seconds after the last significant explosion has taken place, one member of the team is sent out to change the cassettes in the ground zero indicator. This instrument, by means of a pinhole camera technique, records the flash from the nuclear burst onto photographic papers in cassettes slotted into holders. Obviously, okay. people had to pop out to read the actual ground zero indicators to see where the bomb had gone off from, maybe get contamination on their clothes, go back down the hole again, but they had done their job. There it is. It's on the east one. That gives us the bearing as 104 at an elevation of 01. With the system. Luckily, the system was never tested for real. With the end of the Cold War in the early 1990s, Britain's entire network of Royal Observer Corps posts was shut down without ever being called into action. Since then, the network of bunkers planned for use by regional governments during a nuclear war have also all been closed. But one secret still remains. With an H-bomb likely to destroy any central London bunker, where did the Prime Minister and Whitehall plan to try to survive a nuclear attack? Rumours abound about the function of a massive underground complex said to be concealed in quarries beneath this military base in Corsham, Wiltshire. I was last down here, I think it was December 1998, just after the place closed down. I came down with a guy from the MOD to do some record photography. I came against this huge steel door, which um, we were told was a fire exit from the emergency government war headquarters. It's really? yeah, an enormous great thing. You could, you could drive a vehicle through it. You could drive a lorry through it, I reckon. It must have been eight, ten feet high. Great hand wheels and levers and locks. An incredible thing. You don't have that at all? No, I, I believe that they've, they've sealed it off. There's like a buffer zone between this section that you own now and, and, and the, yeah. the government-owned section. So this is the end of the line, as far as we can go? Yep. It's, uh, a bit sinister, isn't it? These sealed corridors that lead off to nowhere. So sort of yeah. indicates they've still got something to hide at caution, doesn't it? The government could in any case requisition at least one of the bunkers which have already been sold. They're still very viable. They're built to keep out radiation and pressure, and they will still do that. And so I've no doubt if something did happen in the uh, near future, somebody, be it government or local council, would requisition this because it would be a safe haven. If there is no solid cover, lie flat in a ditch or a hole and cover your head, face and hands as fast as you can with some of your clothes. If you hear the fallout warning, seek the nearest and best cover as quickly as you can. But before entering the building or cover, brush or shake off any fallout dust you may have picked up and get rid of it. 
change your outer clothing if you can. Stay undercover. When the all-clear sounds, like this... It means that you are safe from attack or fallout for the time being, and that you can go out again. But keep listening for further warnings, or to your radio for further advice. Yeah, really hope you found this of some interest. Uh, it was very sobering times for me growing up in the 60s and even into the early 70s. And uh, the Cold War itself didn't really come to an end until the mid-90s. Uh, and even then, uh, we still got our troubles now. So um, stay safe, take care, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. <laughs>